if you don't prepare for these kind of questions, it could possibly take you aback and you want to be as prepared as possible going to these interviews. Because as you mentioned before, like you get weird questions like, what kind of news do you watch? Right? It's like very intrusive, essentially. Like, why do you care about what I'm like reading? Hey everyone, Melissa Dargan here and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today I have an awesome special guest, Victor Yang. We're going to get into a video that's going to do a deep dive on congressional interview questions and the questions you need to be aware of. But before we get started, Victor, do you want to give your quick intro? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Melissa, for having me. My name is Victor. I am a former congressional staffer, much like Melissa. I am making YouTube videos now. And it was really cool because Victor actually had reached out to me. And the first time I had seen Victor was when he had done the CNBC's millennial money video. So if you haven't checked that out yet, check it out. It goes into Victor's life when he was a congressional staffer. We thought this would be a great time to collaborate and create a video on how to best prepare for a congressional interview. So today's video is going to do a deep dive into eight unique questions that we think are important for you to know about. These are not the typical interview questions like tell me about yourself. They actually are particular to congressional offices and we're going to go into why the congressional office is asking it and what they're looking for. These questions are sourced from multiple congressional offices. So these are actual questions that you will be receiving if you apply for an internship on Capitol Hill. These questions are bipartisan. They are used by both Democratic and Republican offices and will give you insight onto what congressional offices are looking for during an intern interview. If you find this video helpful, remember to give it a like. If you have any questions for us about the interview process, other questions that you want to follow up on, go ahead and comment below and let us know. And I'm also going to say check out Victor's YouTube page and go ahead and subscribe to both his page and my page to be updated on congressional insight videos that we're creating. The other thing that we're excited to share is in the description, we're going to add a link to 30 congressional interview questions that you need to be prepared for. Check out this one pager document with all the questions that we think will help you be prepared whenever you do a congressional interview. It's different when you're like on the hill because it's like you can't just blow them up because then they get angrier and then they come and bite you. And then- Well, you know, and you don't trouble. get rid of your voter, right? Like yeah. that person is a voter, like they matter. You represent them. You can't just be like, you don't matter anymore. <laughs> Delete. Yeah. With that question, I'm gonna first break down why a member of Congress office even cares about this and why they're asking it. So on a day-to-day -day basis, interns are pretty much the face of the member office. They are picking up the phones. They're usually the ones sitting at the front desk. And sometimes constituents are very angry. And what the office is looking for is someone who can calmly talk to their constituent, how would you diffuse the situation? Yeah, that's a really great point. You know, this question really reminds me, Melissa, of a time where uh, when I first started on Capitol Hill as a staff assistant, I was tasked with organizing tours. And I remember a tour group came in and they said, oh, we're so excited to be in DC and we are ready for our White House tour. And I kind of looked at them really confused and I said, I'm so sorry, but I, I wasn't notified of this at all. And they got extremely frustrated and angry. They were like, well, we were promised a White House tour. We traveled so far from another state and we were expecting to get this. And I think that, you know, is one of the reasons why they asked those interview questions because as a staffer, you really need to make sure that you are composed when you are dealing with frustrated, angry constituents. I remember in that case, uh, we have a special privilege that I hope still exists of bringing tours into the house chamber where they actually vote. And so I think I offered that tour group that option to kind of diffuse the situation because they were angry and frustrated. So when you are answering this question, you want to be able to come up with also an example of a time that you had diffused a frustrated, stressful situation, what you did, and basically show the member office that you can think on your feet, react calmly, because they definitely are not looking for someone who is going to just fall apart um, in a very stressful situation. I would have probably 
when I was applying as an intern at 21, 22, been like, uh, <laughs> just because what are you supposed to say? That question is a litmus test for a member office to figure out if you fit. You don't want to have an intern who doesn't believe at least in some of the common themes that a member of Congress is advocating for from a policy standpoint. So a great example of this from my recollection was for one of the bosses that I worked for, he was, uh, he had a very specific policy position. He was known on Capitol Hill for being the go-to person for this position. And what happened was there was an intern who had applied with the interview that we had conducted with them. They were very against this policy decision. And so you can kind of see where there could be tension. If you're bringing someone like that into the office where it's already established that the member of Congress is not going to budge on that issue, then you're going to have some tension. You know, that's one of the reasons why that question is asked a lot. For me as a former staffer, there are a number of things where you may not 100% agree with the person you're going to work with, but you have to keep in mind, just like you said, if it is the like top policy stance that that member has and you disagree with it, you may, as an intern or staffer applying for the job, want to reconsider working for that boss if it's something that you're not going to agree with. To Victor's point, it is a question where they can filter interns of like, who would be a right fit? You really have to think, are you a right fit for the office? Are they a right fit for you? And so that's something as well, where if you had to come to work every day and you didn't fully believe half of the things that the member was saying, could you really for the next three months eight weeks or whatever your internship is, come into work every day saying the things that the member believes that you may not. And just a final point, Melissa, I think one of the things to keep in mind too is this is not just a struggle that interns go through. I think this is a struggle that staffers go through too. A lot of times someone will pick up a job with a member and as they work for them, they're starting to question and realize themselves like, oh my goodness, I'm having conflicts with what the boss is really thinking or where the boss wants to go. And so focusing on those similarities, the commonalities is so important because that's what gets you through. Sometimes you may not get along 100% with your, with your coworkers or a superior, or in this case, if you're an intern, your intern coordinator. The member office is looking for how you handle conflict resolution. You not only want to say that you'd calmly approach them, be communicative, but also here's X, Y, and Z options of how to solve it. Don't bring up problems if you don't have solutions. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a great point because you don't want to be that individual in your intern cohort that's just always saying, well, like, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with this. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, we should do something different and not offer an alternative because then you just seem to be like a grandstander. So where do I get my news? I get my news from every reliable source on the internet. So CNN, Fox News, NBC News. I will sometimes go to what people consider more partisan news sites. I won't mention which ones, but I will sometimes take a quick peek just because I want to give myself a diversity of ideas. I want to really show that I'm willing to listen to people on the other side of my political beliefs, even though I might disagree with them. Why is this question asked by congressional offices? Because they're trying to see, again, if you're a good fit politically. What about you, Melissa? I'm really curious. Why do you think this question is being asked? They're definitely trying to see where you get your news sources from and effectually draw from that the kind of policy beliefs that you have that goes ultimately to whether or not you would fit to be a good intern in that office. When you're on Capitol Hill, these things are important. Some of these questions that we're asking you seem a little bit like, why would the congressional office ask this? <laughs> it's like very intrusive, essentially. Like, why do you care about what I'm like reading and what I, how yeah. I'm thinking? It's digging in deeper into something where they can then understand more of who you are and if you are a right fit. And it's really about fit. How to tackle this question. Be honest about the news sources that you read, that you watch. And it may be good to consider that reading a diverse set of news sources will be good because I think it's important to educate yourself and then form your own opinion from that. I think it would be a red flag in general if you just go to one news source and that is all you do and there's no diversification of opinions. Um, because even within 
certain news cycles, right? You can get very different points of view that I think help bring about truth. I think just one story really comes up. I remember when I was on Capitol Hill, I was working for an office. It was a Democratic office. And a lot of times they would play Fox News. <laughs> and I always thought that was really fascinating. But one of the reasons why I started realizing we watched Fox News is because this you know, office was more of a swing district. It was a competitive district, meaning that it was a district that could swing to a Republican or a Democrat any given year. And so, <laughs> you know, watching Fox News is great because you could watch and you could be like, oh, like that's what Republicans are thinking. So if I vote for or against this bill, they can potentially create a attack ad, slap it on Fox News and play that to rile up, you know, the conservatives and eventually, you know, beat my office out of a job. Don't, don't just say something unique. Like I was an archer for the U.S. Olympic team, which is cool, right? But like, if it doesn't tie back to the job you are applying for, that may not help you necessarily get the job. It makes you be a cool person and like amazing accomplishment, but that doesn't tell more about why they want to hire you over somebody else. So really make sure that you tie back whatever your unique characteristic is back to the job that you're applying for on Capitol Hill. At least for me, I'd really talk about my passion for wanting more Asian Americans in government and politics. I I generally just want more people to be engaged with government and politics, but specifically for me, uh, just on like a personal note, being an Asian American, I hadn't ever seen a lot of people in this space before. And that's something that I would highlight. I would say, I really feel that if I am picked for whatever role this is within government, that I hope that the knowledge that this job will provide, I will be allowed to pass on to help more people from these populations that are historically underrepresented be more engaged with government. So I think that it's important to bring up some of these emotional passion ties in this kind of question because it shows something outside of your professional accomplishments and it gives another layer of, of depth into why you wanna work for this member particular that makes you stand out. that you have ties to the district where your family members live. And it means a lot to you to work in an area that you can actually see change because you're affecting it among the people that you grew up with, that you're friends with, that you're where your family lives. And keep in mind, like members of Congress get applications from a diverse set of individuals from all across the country. But what makes you stand out is if you are a constituent and you're passionate about working for that member in particular. And even better if you like come come directly from that district. Absolutely. I think that's a great point. And just to add on, if you've done internships before on the Hill and you're looking for another one, ask around and see what makes that office unique. I do remember one office where every Friday they would invite the offices and other staffers down the hall to come onto their balcony and do this barbecue every Friday. And so if you find out that the office that you're applying for is like the social office and you are really good at being a master griller, then you may want to be like, oh, fun fact, people have said I'm one of the best grillers of my time. (laughs) Because again, it also makes you unique because if you can cook a mean steak, they may want you. So just keep in mind that there's not one way to answer this question that is going to be a silver bullet, right, to get you that job, you make sure you do your research and then really highlight unique characteristics that will play into the office you're applying for. That's also actually a great point, because I remember when I interviewed once for an office, (laughs) and I mean, this person is up to bigger and higher places too, but uh, they asked me, they were like, oh, this member actually pulls pranks. Are you okay with, what kind of pranks have you pulled or something like that? <laughs> I was just like, what kind of interview question is that? And I didn't get the job probably because I didn't prepare. Like if I had really prepared for that job interview, I would have figured out that they were going to ask me a question about pranks and I should have given them a good answer. So that's probably why they didn't hire me for the job. I probably wasn't loose enough and accommodating enough maybe for the member to pull a prank on me. (laughs) You just weren't the right fit, Victor. (laughs) Yeah, it just wasn't a good fit, so. My work style tends to be a very type A personality. And for those of you who are interested in working on the Hill, that seems to be a 
personality type that is pretty common. You have to kind of be really driven and on top of things. It dives into the culture on Capitol Hill, which is something that people need to consider if they are applying for an internship and maybe a job on Capitol Hill, which is that you stay until the job is done. There would be times where I'd be staying up really, really late waiting for votes to be called. It's just the nature of the job. You have to stay as late as possible in order to get the job done. And that's the type of person that they're looking for on Capitol Hill. They're looking for people who are team players and they have the work ethic that I'm going to stay and get this job done no matter how hard, no matter how long it's going to take. This question filters for fit. And so you want to be honest in the way that you work because you also want to find an office that will be good for you and good for you to learn and grow in. There are different offices on Capitol Hill that will either be the one that like sets you a checklist that you need to do and then they check up on you. And then others where they're like, come out with your own ideas, follow through, but we let you do you. It's what makes that question kind of tough because it is fit, right? And being able to figure out what that fit is in every office is so important. As Victor had alluded to in a previous question, everything is moving very fast on Capitol Hill that you may make a mistake and it may be minor or it may be major. Um, and it's how you recover that the office is really looking for what your answer is going to be. If you make a mistake, don't try to punt it or blame somebody else. Own up to it because it will come to light. You know, it, it, things can blow out of proportion so quickly. If you make a mistake, there are four steps, right? You want to be honest about it. You want to make sure that you don't put the blame on somebody else. You also come up with solutions. How are you going to fix it? This was your mistake. Now figure out a solution. Go above and beyond what you think that solution should be to like to a reasonable extent. And then four, think about how you are going to prevent that mistake in the future. What are your thoughts, Victor? I think everything that you said, Melissa, was really, really great advice to anyone uh, who's trying to answer that question. Just to add on, I think another thing that you could also say is I make mistakes. I'm human, you know, I try to mitigate those mistakes as much as possible. But when I do make a mistake, I go above and beyond to correct it. I've made mistakes too in my time on the Hill. One of the things that a lot of staffers need to do is they need to provide flags for their constituents. When we were on the Hill, you actually had to physically buy a flag and bring it to the office in the Capitol for them to fly it over the actual building. And I forgot, I completely messed up. I was really, really nervous. It was traumatizing because I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, am I gonna get fired for this? I ended up calling the flag office and I was very fortunate. This is a good kind of uh, tip for people who are staff assistants on the Hill right now, but the flag office actually flies a certain amount of flags every day just for these accidents when you forget. Uh, and so for me, you know, I. I think I emailed that constituent. I said, I'm sorry, this is my mistake. This was caught up in my system. I brought them like a pen or something that had the congressional logo on it. I mailed them both the flag and the gift. And so I really tried to go above and beyond to correct my mistake. And I'm glad that I did that because if I hadn't and I had just, you know, tried to sweep it under the rug and I could have actually been fired because who knows what that constituent would have done. They would have been like, this is something that I need to tweet about or write about because clearly this member of Congress is not doing the basics that I need to do. To that point, it's like a staffer could make the mistake, but who takes the heat? It's the member of Congress or the senator. And that's what you want to avoid. So why would this question be asked by an office? Well, they're, again, trying to figure out if you are a good fit. They're trying to figure out what is this person's working tendencies and does that vibe with my work environment? Because Capitol Hill, at least when you work for a member of the House of Representatives, the offices are so small that if you don't vibe with the work environment, then a lot of times they won't consider you because they don't want to disrupt the team chemistry. What about you, Melissa? What are your thoughts? I definitely agree that this question is also filtering for fit. And as many of you guys have probably started to see, 
these unique questions that we pulled out that may seem like coming from left field, like, why are you asking me this? It's really to vet, will you fit in their office? And this is something we hadn't talked about yet, but if some of these questions make you also wonder, what kind of work environment does your office have? Feel free to ask that. So utilize this interview as well to see if this office is the right fit for you. You'll probably be applying to multiple offices and you mm -hmm. can really get that sense. It's like choosing college, right? Or like choosing grad school. You really want to figure out what institution will offer you the best place where you will fit because that's also where you will thrive and it will make a difference. These eight questions that we did a deep dive on are questions that are different from the typical, tell us about yourself, or what is a weakness and strength that a friend would say that you have in the workplace? These are questions that are very open-ended and understanding a little bit more of Hill culture, because I think that is kind of what will help you really understand how to answer these questions. And as Melissa said, it's really challenging. Every office is different. We are providing you what the office is looking for, why they're asking these particular questions, and how best you can think about framing your answer. And again, we created, Victor and I put together a list of 30 interview questions, real congressional questions that get asked for job interviews that you can check out in the link below. We hope that you find our feedback, our insights helpful in this job process. We know it's stressful. We know it's highly competitive. We hope to provide you with insights that you may not receive from just, you know, putting Google internship questions. These are particular to congressional offices that we sourced from real offices. And I do want to note that they are bipartisan in nature. Offices who are Democrats and Republicans ask these questions. It doesn't matter your political affiliation. What matters is eventually them finding the fit on how you answer. We're hoping that with this deep dive that we did, this provides you the framework to give you the best shot of getting these jobs, the internship, and whatever else you're applying for on Capitol Hill. But I would encourage everyone who's watching to comment down below. Tell us if you think that there is more that you would like us to talk about in terms of what kind of interview questions that you might receive on Capitol Hill, but also share with us if you are applying for an internship. With that, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. And I'm also going to say, check out Victor's YouTube page and go ahead and subscribe to both his page and my page to be updated on congressional insight videos that we're creating that we hope are going to help the broader general public just understand what's going on in Congress. Other than that, we hope to see you in the next video. Bye everyone. Should we like, click up here for Melissa's videos. And since you guys are still around, uh, make sure you check out the other videos. Victor, I think you wanna set it up. Are they here actually? Because aren't we side by side? Oh yeah, so I'll do this, oh. <laughs> where, where are they? I don't know where they're gonna be. Wherever they are, click on them so you can learn more. <laughs> Sorry everyone, we don't know where they are. So wherever they are, click on them please. <laughs> we need to get we need to get Melissa and uh, monetize soon. <laughs>